This is the Umarex Gauntlet. Umarex is a German company that was started back in 1972. Umarex is well known for taking traditional firearms and creating air gun replicas. Umarex currently holds licenses for such popular firearms such as Beretta, Colt, HK, and Ruger, just to name a few. This particular model of the Umarex Gauntlet is the .177 caliber. It does come in a .22 and a .25. I ordered the .177 only because it was on sale on walmart.com for $196, which is a great price for a regulated PCP air rifle. All right, let's take a look in the box here. So it's neatly packaged, very nice packaging by Umarex. So you have in the box your 10 shot magazine. You have your single shot tray. And you have your degassing tool and you can also use this tool to take the gun apart. The one downside is this version of the Umarex gauntlet did not come with a scope. So that's a bit of a bummer, but I did get a good deal on a scope through walmart.com, which I'll talk about later. I was pleasantly surprised with how well packaged this was. It was very neatly packaged, but there was a few issues I had. Like for one, the tank was a little loose when I got it. As you can see here, it's moving back and forth. And also the shroud for the tank wasn't secured well. So it's a little floppy. As you can see here, I can press this side in and it wiggles. It shouldn't wiggle. So I did have to make a few adjustments after taking it out of the box. And it actually really made a difference. Overall, I like the design of the Umarex Gauntlet. I don't like the fact that it has that huge bottle in the front, but I got used to it after a while. Um, the fill port is easy to use on the side. It uses the standard fitting for the fill ports on PCPs so you don't have to go out and buy a special adapter for it. Now that I showed you the gun, let's take it out and shoot it. This probably wasn't a good day to take the gun out and shoot. It was really windy and it did rain at one point, but this was the only time I had, so I decided to suck it up and work with the weather. You can see here that the target is rocking back and forth quite a bit and I did have it secured to my usual shooting apparatus that I had made but unfortunately it was so windy it was actually tipping that so I did have to add some weights to it later. So I wasn't too thrilled about this grouping I mean it's still a good grouping but I felt like I could do better um, kind of like this one right here this one was a really nice clean group and I wanted to try to replicate that. At this point, it started to rain and the wind really picked up. Uh, the target is moving quite a bit, but from where I was, I couldn't really tell. I don't know if it was just a matter of perspective. I didn't realize the target was moving that much, but I still got a pretty decent group out of this. So after I finish off this magazine, I'm going to reset the target, put a new paper up, wait for the rain and the wind to calm down, and I'm going to shoot a new paper after this.
So this was the paper target after I was done. The bottom right, I was sighting in the scope, and then the top right, I was fine tuning that sighting. And then the top left is where I did my first decent group when the scope was sighted in. So after the rain, I had brought the rifle in the house so it wouldn't get wet. And I had laid it on a table and for some reason it slid off the table and landed on the ground so i don't know if it landed on the site but i had to recite the rifle and this is what i'm doing here in the top right is i'm just sighting in again as you can see it's shooting really low um at first it was shooting a little high and then it started shooting a little low so this is just me walking it in and sighting in the scope one more time So this is just me making some minor adjustments to the site and then I finish off the mag when I'm happy with where I'm sighted in. So here on the bottom left target, I was pretty much where I want to be. There was a couple of flyers on this one, but in this 10 shot magazine, uh, I actually did a pretty good group of a lot of uh, pellets going into the same hole, which was really impressive to me. I was like, wow, I never really had an air rifle that would do that like, consistently, and this one did. So I was pretty impressed with this group. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this, but this is another one of those groups where a lot of the pellets went into the same holes. And this one actually ended up blowing out the back of this one inch plywood that I'm shooting in, which is pretty amazing because I've been using one inch plywood for all my brake barrels and uh, pump action air guns. And I never had something blow out the back of a plywood so easily, <laughs> like a one inch plywood so easily, as you'll see in a second. Through. Oh, there. So they're all 10 shot rounds each. I'm going to try and do a fifth mag. I'm going to run low on air. Let's try. Aim for the center there. See if we can blow that out too.
It's not bad for being low on air. Let's check out the back. Right here. Jeez. This piece of plywood is pretty thick. Look at that. I think it's one inch. <laughs> Maybe one and a half. It's pretty fat. One and a quarter, maybe. Jeez. Pretty strong ass rifle, I'll tell you that much. So this was my little setup for uh, this demonstration. I have my mini table and my cold wall shooting rest. The cold wall shooting rest right now is on clearance on Amazon for $25. You should go pick one up. All right, and that was a look at the Umarex Gauntlet. This is an excellent, excellent rifle. It's super accurate. I think I'm gonna do some more videos on this one and how accurate it is at different distances because this thing was just nailing those targets. And I was using the Crossman hollow point this is the .177 caliber air rifle, and I was using the Premier hollow points for, from Crossman. These are actually pretty good pellets for this gun. This gun really seems to like it. It doesn't seem to be pellet picky either. The only ones that didn't really work was I had like some cheap daisy pellets that I tried in it, and they were just all over the place, and I think it's because they're just too light. They just don't really fly well and they make like a weird whizzing noise when they exit the bar barrel so yeah other than that this was a great gun i'm so glad i bought it got it from walmart for only 196 i think it was uh after taxes it came out to like two something like 206 dollars plus ship like shipping or what they call handling fee was only 32 cents which you can't go wrong Um, this scope did not come with the rifle. The rifle did not include a scope, but this is another thing I wanted to talk about real quick. This is the Hatsan uh, Optima scope. I got this too from Walmart. It's an all metal scope. It's a, I believe it's a three to nine by 32 scope. And it was only $25. Like it original price was $50 and it, it was marked down on clearance for $25. So I had to pick it up for this. It's fits it perfect it's all steel construction it's actually a really good scope it uses the mill dots those little dots on the crosshairs so yeah and it worked out great because this didn't have a scope originally and there's no iron sights on it so when you buy it um you're gonna have to get a scope for it and the scope was really easy to tune i, I like that the caps on it are, are metal on here these caps are metal so it's a, a little bonus review on this scope and it has just a little coin slot um, turn that you turn the, the thing to. So I do like that a lot. Um, I haven't had any issues with this scope yet. With it like coming off of target from transporting. I do have that issue with the Gamma ones. Every time I transport my Gamma air rifles with the Gamma brand scopes, I will have to uh, sight them in before I start shooting every time. This one was fine. I, transported it to two different places and never had to adjust the sights at all which was great um but back to the gauntlet a couple of things i didn't really care for about this is when i first got the gauntlet this um tank in here wasn't screwed on all the way and i think they do that on purpose i'm not sure but you just gotta make sure that this is tight before you fill it the tank the bolt was really really stiff it still is a little stiff but it loosened up quite a bit there was a lot of people that complained about the gauntlet trigger, but to me the trigger is not that bad. I kind of like that creep. I don't know. It's it has a long creep to it before it actually engages, and I kind of like that. I don't know why, but <laughs> I just like it. Um, better for me. The safety is a little stiff. It's very very like hard to engage, but to disengage is pretty easy. You can do it one handed. Uh, it's pretty loud too. I, I don't know if like people, I like the more silent like push button style triggers or the ones that are over here that you can flick. Um, the cheek rest I had to play with for a while to get it to a nice height for me on what I prefer. Uh, but it's great that it is adjustable and this is uh, right now set to how I like it. 
Um, the barrel construction is great. The shroud is steel. The inner barrel is steel. There's a little baffle at the tip of the gun. You can't really see it on camera right now because this gun is so big. <laughs> I can't get it in frame. Um, I don't have a microphone too right now, so I gotta have the camera as close as possible. But I do like the fact too that after you cock the gun, and I'm doing this on this side, but after you cock the gun, you can actually decock it by holding the trigger and lifting up the bolt, pushing it back in. That's a great feature to have too. So you don't get any like accidental shots or you, you cock the gun, but you're not planning on shooting. You can just decock it real quick, which is great. Uh, the gauge on here looks a little cheap on this version. Uh, I saw nicer gauges. Maybe I think you can order the gauges for these tanks. I'm pretty sure you can. Maybe I'll buy a nicer gauge for this one. This one looks a little cheap. It's a ninja gauge. Um, so yeah, it looks, <laughs> it looks really cheap. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Other than that, this is such an awesome gun. I'm glad I got this for the price I did. I was a little bummed that I couldn't get like the .22, which is one that I would have purchased as well. But I'm fine with the 177. I'm not planning on hunting with this at all in Hawaii, uh, especially on Oahu. There's not many things you can hunt. I mean, you can hunt boar. That's pretty much it. You can hunt boar. Uh, you shouldn't shoot any other birds in Hawaii because a lot of them are endangered. <laughs> So you don't, if you don't know which ones are endangered, then I wouldn't go bird hunting. And I, I don't really like eating um, bird, <laughs> like small birds. I like chicken, I like turkey, but I don't like small birds. And we don't, have, we don't have turkey on Oahu. We have turkey on other islands that you can hunt. Um, there's also deer on other islands you can hunt, but Oahu doesn't have anything like that. Uh, we have mainly just boar, that's it. Um, you can shoot rats, and this is the perfect caliber for rat shooting. Uh, not so much to eat, but you know, to as a form of pest control. Uh, we do have quite a bit of rats around here. Um, I wouldn't recommend shooting chickens with this because you will kill the chicken unless you're planning on eating the chicken. Don't shoot it with this gun. <laughs> we do have a chicken problem here too on Oahu, but it's kind of a weird thing. Like people will say like shooting the chickens is cruelty to animals. And I guess you would be right in that sense, but you know, shooting a rat isn't. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a weird, a weird law, <laughs> or it's not. It's not a law. It's like, it's just something, you know, to think about. Um, but yeah, chickens are pretty rampant, especially around the windward side where I live. They're everywhere. Uh, in fact, uh, the other I don't really have chickens here because there's like a cat that cruises on this property, and he usually chases the chickens away. But I haven't seen them in a while, and because I haven't seen them in like a couple of weeks, uh, the chickens have come back and there's like chickens right now in the neighbor's yard um and she was complaining that they're waking her up at like four o'clock in the morning just like crowing or if like uh something startles them they get all nuts and they're running around the yard clucking it's just crazy there's a lot of people that uh pop illegal fireworks around here too and it's like a really loud boom and that like freaks the chickens out for like 10 minutes they're running around just clucking and it says really annoying um but yeah i guess you can't consider them a, pe a pest just yet but yeah they're everywhere here <laughs> but anyways let's go back to the gun uh the umarek gun this one came to me it was a little weird it looks like it has like a little bit of white stuff all over the gun like in certain places like there's some over here uh there was some on this side i think i wiped off what i could but what I had to do to get most of that stuff off was just get like a rough, like a rough paper towel and just rub it with some cleaner and it seemed to come off. But I think it's more like polishing the plastic because now the plastic in those spots are really smooth. So I kind of just stopped. I wasn't doing that anymore. But the rifle does feel really good in the hands. It's best if you hold it from here. Oh, sorry. It's best that you hold it from here instead of up here because this shroud is kind of a... This tank shroud is a little loose. Um, you, I did tighten mine. When I first got this thing, this thing was super crooked and wasn't lined up properly, and now it is. Uh, I see a lot of people complaining that this shroud will eventually start touching the barrel shroud. The tank shroud will start touching the barrel shroud and it causes it to um, misalign the barrel when you're shooting. I haven't had that problem yet, but then again, I hardly ever rest anything on here. Um, only when I put it like on the, the shooting stack here or the the bag that I have for shooting as well. Um, this thing is pretty heavy. So if you're gonna freehand this sucker, 
which I did I did a couple of times for sighting in the rifle to see if I could do it freehand, which was a bad idea because my arms are so sore after because this thing is pretty heavy holding it. But, you know, you get used to it after a while, which is a good thing. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty girthy air rifle. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, if you want to go onto walmart.com now and pick this guy up, I think you should. It actually comes shipped directly from Umarex. It doesn't come from Walmart. You purchase from Walmart. Walmart has a deal, I guess, with Umarex where you purchase their products through them and then they send the order form to Umarex and Umarex ships it to you. And I live in Hawaii. This thing came in less than a week. It was like maybe five days, four days. This thing was already at my door. So it's like extremely fast shipping. And, um, yeah, it got to me quick and I was like, oh man, I didn't even get the scope yet. I didn't get the pump yet. Um, let me get the pump real quick. I'll be right back. All right, so if you're just getting into PCPs like I am, this is my first PCP air rifle, my uh, pre-charged pneumatic air rifle. You have to either get a pump, um, live close to a dive shop so they can fill your tank for you, but these small tanks, I wouldn't recommend I would buy like a large tank and a lot of people say don't use air tanks but I I don't see a problem with using an air tank I mean you're just filling your gun with it I'm not too sure what the issue is like using like an oxygen tank to fill these guns um, if you're filling these tanks at a dive shop anyway it should be the same but I guess oxygen tanks pressurize differently I don't know I'm not sure I'm not a scientist but I do see people online using dive tanks and oxygen tanks to fill their um, or air tanks, not oxygen tanks, air tanks to fill their uh, PCP. So I don't understand what the issue is with it. Why people say don't use a diving tank to fill your PCP, which you can take this to a dive shop and have them fill it for you. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you can also get a compressor, a high pressure compressor, which will run you anywhere from 250 on the low end, the cheap end. Those are the ones that kind of take a while to fill all the way up to like i seen some for 500 600 700 dollars just for um a pump for your air rifle so if you're just getting into pcps i would suggest going out and buying one of these <laughs> these things are pretty expensive they can they they can go up to like a hundred something dollars themselves but this one was on clearance notice the beautiful woodland camo on there um that's how I got this so cheap. It was on clearance on eBay, I believe, and it was only $45. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there of people buying these pumps for under $40, like $35, but that's not the case for me here in Hawaii. The biggest thing was is I saw a lot of these pumps on sale for $35, but when I looked at the shipping, the shipping was $200, $200 to send me a $35 pump. That was ridiculous. This one was $45 with free shipping and it was on clearance. So I got it and it worked great. Um, I only had one issue with it where one of the seals on the bottom here was broken, but this is those China made pumps. They come with a bag full of replacement um, gaskets and even filters for the little air filter thing, which is a good thing because here in Hawaii, we do have a lot of moisture in our air. And yeah, so I might have to change this out too. I changed it out once already and it was pretty wet and it had a lot of oil in it. Um, but yeah, these pumps are pretty good. Um, you get a workout. I'm gonna tell you that now, you're gonna get a workout pumping your gauntlet, especially its initial pump. Oh man, it took me 200 and I believe it was 250 or close to 250 pumps to get this thing full. And now I keep it above a thousand. Uh, I keep this tank pressurized above a thousand um, just so I don't have to pump it so much. Cause that first initial uh, pumping was, you know, a lot. <laughs> To finally get it full and now I can just like to keep it um, to pump it back to 3,000 like I'll shoot it down to a thousand and to put it back at 3,000 psi it will take maybe about like 50 to 100 pumps depending depending where I'm at I usually do it after every four magazines they say you can get up to six magazines out of this but I don't find that to be accurate um, I noticed that it starts making that poof poof that like farting noise <laughs> um, probably after the fourth magazine like on your fifth magazine you'll notice 
that the pressure isn't that snappy pack out of the barrel. It goes more like pong, pong. Um, don't get me wrong, the pellets still do fly out there at a pretty good velocity. Um, so far, what I got out of this rifle without having any significant drop was five full 10 shot magazines, so that's 50 shots. Um, without any issues and then on the sixth magazine maybe like the third pellet in it was just like like the pellet the power of the rifle had dropped significantly so if you keep this rifle pumped above um a thousand you're good you don't have to worry about it and anytime it gets close to or maybe um just below a thousand you might want to grab your good old pump and just start pumping um <laughs> Yeah, so the only issue I had with this was one of the rubber seals was broke on the bottom over here, but it's really easy to maintain. They give you a bag of spares, and I had a feeling this little rubber seal that was in here was going to break soon because when I first got the pump and this part already came assembled, uh, I just had to put the handle on and this um, gauge on. It just, uh, there was a little black piece of rubber sticking out of here, so I knew that seal wasn't going to last very long which it didn't. It broke pretty fast. <laughs> but I'm glad I got this. Um, I got the gun before I got any of these other things. So the gun kind of just sat there and I had to wait for this and I had to wait for this to come in before I could actually shoot it. In fact, um, this scope was the last thing to come. Um, so what I ended up doing is I took my scope off of my Gamo um, varmint and, you, and put it on here because uh, as much as I love the varmint, I haven't really used it too much lately. Um, and it was only temporary till I got this in. And the gun actually worked pretty well when I did some initial testing, you know, before shooting this video. The gun actually did really, really well with that scope. But the downside is that this gun has so much power, I needed to go further, you know? I didn't want to do just like uh, 25, or not 25 yards, I would say like maybe like I didn't want to just like keep it at like 15 yards and 20 yards. I wanted to go to 25, um, like maybe 30 yards, uh, maybe even 40 yards. And so the testing that I did here was at 30, I think it was at about 30 yards. I did that testing. So close to, um, uh, yeah, close to 30 yards because I just did the entire length of our property and our property is about, um, 40 yards and I just had like a little space where I wasn't wasn't uh, there um, wasn't using because we have like a shed over there and like some tree line on the property so yeah but anyways so about 30 yards it did pretty darn good at 30 yards and like those groups were amazing and the power was amazing I mean did you guys see the blowout on that like one and a half inch board I was shooting like I figured this thing isn't gonna punch through that and it sure did, <laughs> it sure did punch through that. I mean, like the shots are so like dead on accurate. It's just pummeling the same part of that wood every time and, until it just blows through. It was great. I, it was a huge shock to me the first time I did it. And I didn't get the first one on film. That was the worst part, is that was the cleanest group I ever had with this gun. It was only the second time after sighting it in, I shot it and I didn't get it on film. I only got the aftermath on film, which was the really nice tight group and the blown out back. <laughs> I wish I recorded it, but I was only testing the gun and getting the sight ready to shoot. Um, so, yeah, but that was like the tightest group I ever had with like an air rifle in general. And I'm pretty proud of that grouping. That grouping was pretty good. Um, and I was shot like again, like this is the only one I'm using is the 177 caliber uh, Premier Hollow Points by Crossman at 7.9 grain. And the reason why I'm using like a lot of Crossman stuff is because it's what I can afford right now. Like I don't mind spending like $7 on a tin of uh, Hollow Points from Walmart, um, especially the premieres. They're actually really good pellets for this gauntlet uh, and my uh, Gamo um, Swarm. 
the 22 caliber gamble swarm the hollow point pellets were great in it and they're cheap they're affordable you're not spending like 30 40 dollars on the other uh, brands of these that are supposed to be a lot better and i'd say that like my grouping was pretty good <laughs> um there was an instance like you'll see that like some of the grouping like varied towards the end and that's because what had happened was it started to rain and I was panicking I grabbed the gun to get it out of the rain and I kind of just put it in the house and I went to go finish cleaning up everything else outside getting it out of the rain and I heard a big thud so the rifle actually had fallen and I don't know if it fell on the scope but it was on the floor when I came in and then when I started shooting again like after the sun came out the it was shooting higher so i had to adjust the scope again and those uh variables you'll see on the targets you'll see that it's like sh the groups have gotten wider and wider until it like tightened up again um that that's why there's those uh different shots on the board and i think i recorded most of them too so i can take a look at that later um but yeah yeah, so I guess that's going to be it for this video. This Umarx Gauntlet is an amazing air rifle. It's very extremely accurate. Probably the most accurate air rifle I own right now. I do like the bolt action system, although it is really stiff in the beginning. In fact, now it's loosened up a lot, but it's still kind of stiff when you're cocking it. Um, my suggestion is to use your thumb on the back here and just pull the back bolt back with your right hand. Um, this is the bolt unfortunately cannot be switched to the other side. I am left-handed But I actually don't mind that because when I am shooting this gun um, I can actually have my hand on the bolt here and I can fire and I can pull back with my right hand without Losing sight of my target and I can fire again and then use my right hand to pull the back bolt back lock it back into place and then fire again so I can constantly keep my eye through there, which is good. Uh, I like that feature. So I don't really mind this one not being an ambidextrous rifle or ambidextrous rifle. Um, it actually works out perfect for me. Uh, by the way, I got this thing too on Amazon, this rifle holder thing. Um, I use it for sighting in mostly instead of the bags because this one actually keeps the rifles more sturdy than the bags do, in my opinion, anyway. Um, and this thing was only $25 on Amazon, so go ahead and look for it. I believe it's on a clearance right now. They're trying to get rid of it out of stock. Um, one of the things you'll notice about my channel is I do buy a lot of like stuff that is on sale and on clearance because I don't really have a lot of money right now, and especially like with the coronavirus and low work coming in, not really working as much as we used to. Um, I kind of want to keep the budget stuff um, going for now, what I can afford and when I can make a video. Uh, so I might not be making videos every week anymore. I, you guys kind of probably noticed that if you guys are an avid watcher of this channel. But what I'm going to end up doing is like kind of slowing things down a little bit. I'll probably try to put out a video every two weeks. And maybe sometimes I might put out two videos in one week. You never know. But anyways, that's going to be it for today. This is an excellent air rifle. Go to walmart.com and pick it up now before they're gone. Um, you can get this rifle for actually just above $200, and it's a PCP. You're not going to find a better deal than that for the way, how accurate this rifle is. There are PCPs that are about $200, but you're not going to find one as accurate as this one as the Umarx Gauntlet. I would also like to add that this PCP is regulated so you get more steady stream shots with with each fill. There's not a real noticeable drop off when you're firing this rifle. Um, it's a great rifle. I wish there were more videos on YouTube of the 177 caliber. Everybody likes the .22 or the .25 but those are like $160 more than what you would pay for this one. And I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the .177 caliber. To me, it was a great buy. <laughs> but anyways, that's gonna be it for today. You guys have a wonderful day. Aloha.